Costin, what, what is the objection to good guys who are trying to rid the internet of a, of, of a big problem, uh, taking proactive approaches to cleaning uh, an, an infected user's machine? And just, just as a general discussion topic, is it something that the good guys should pursue? And you know what? What is the general objection to something like that? So he here's my thing: if your machine is infected and you are not responsible for cleaning your machine, and your machine turns around and starts attacking my machine, at some point you give up the right to control that machine. At some point, somebody has to take control of that. It's a very you know very sensitive topic. What is what is there an objection to this, and how do we get around that? Right. Uh, well, I want to build up on what Vitali was saying previously that. Uh, in many cases, such actions are uh, illegal, and he said in most countries, and I think actually it's um, very true. And in addition to being illegal, we're also talking not only illegal, but unethical. And uh, getting access to the user's machines uh, can be seen you know, as a violation from many points of view. And I think here the issue is not just with security companies getting access, but if we think about the Dutch police, and the Dutch police uh, has been uh, the most effective uh, law enforcement uh, organization around the world to take down botnets. So what I did in October when they took down the Bradle Lab uh, botnet, um, after uh, getting down, after uh, getting access to the CNC, they pushed an executable to the user's machine. And uh, actually there was quite a huge, uh, you know, um, um, public, um, you know, outburst about that effect. And people objected about the fact that maybe the police here overstepped their uh, boundaries and they were doing something which was not really nice. And uh, I'd like actually to ask you guys in the audience, uh, if you, do, you th do you feel comfortable with the idea knowing that the police could get access to your computer in such a way without your knowledge. So if you're okay with that idea, please raise your hands. All right, let me play, uh, uh, let me play, let me play devil's advocate for a second, just for the sake of discussion. If, and, and let's put it in a real world perspective, if you are in your home, but you have a gun out your window, you know, firing indiscriminately at people, should, uh, shouldn't law enforcement have the right to invade your home and uh, disinfect your home from that threat? Isn't it, isn't it, you know, in many respects the same thing. Your machine is infected, your machine is now becoming a danger to the rest of the internet. Shouldn't law enforcement of some, or, or some organization have the right to go into your machine and, and do that disinfection? And this is, you know, something that's open for everyone, I mean. Let me, uh, sorry, just <laughs> very quickly on to answer uh, your point by saying the fact that uh, you can, the real analogy here is a, a, cyber, a criminal getting a hostage and asking the hostage to shoot other people on the street. So here it's more about the police uh, taking down the, uh, the criminal, not the hostage who is being, you know, threatened to do that kind of thing. So maybe that's a better analogy in my opinion. Okay, and, well, what's, uh, and, and, and what stops, what, why, why shouldn't we go in and do that? Well, I'll let Vitaly uh, also provide his opinion. Yeah, yeah, my opinion is that anyways, if your computer is infected, that means that the bad guys have control. They have access to your system. They have access to your data. And which one would you prefer to, to have access? The bad guys or the law enforcement or some good organization or you no know, association of you know, companies? I, I guess the choice is obvious. Because the bad guys do, you know, they steal the data from you. Police doesn't need your data if you're not criminal. Well, let's examine some of the ethical issues related to that as well. Let's, let's just say we get, to a, we get to a point in the industry in general a few years from now where it is commonplace for law enforcement uh, to you know, push down ex executables either to remove the malware or push down an executable that directs people to a website with guidance, of ho however it's done, like, like the Dutch police did recently. Uh, who is responsible for, uh, let's say, a machine that's connected to a, a, a computer that's connected to a heart machine in a hospital that's infected? And let's say they the, the attempt by law enforcement to do disinfections disrupts that process and someone dies. Who handle, I mean, how do you get around some of the you know, liability issues, some of the, not necessarily ethical issues only, but some of the liability issues because some machines are sensitive, uh, handling critical infrastructure, sensitive data, some issues in that way. Because you're saying 
Vitaly is saying, you know, who do you prefer to go in, the good guys or the bad guys? The bad guys are already in there. What if the good guys go in and disrupt something that's critical? How do we get around that issue? Yeah. Question for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, something goes wrong. <laughs> I can tell you, I can tell you a short story from my own experience. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I visited the house of my parents, and basically they have two computer systems uh, in their home. Uh, one they use for, I don't know, just storing photos and going online, talking to me. The other is used for mainly for accounting business purposes. Uh, and the second computer that was used for business purposes uh, wasn't there. Um, oh, it wasn't. Um, I, I haven't worked on that for a while. I was on a long business trip, and when I came after the trip, I checked their system, and uh, it seemed to be not up to date. Uh, and their antivirus license expired, so it was not protected. And that computer was connected to the internet using a uh, pretty slow internet line. It was a dial-up modem, 56 uh, kilobits per second, so it's very slow. But I discovered that it was infected, and I found about four or five different malware families, including Configure. So I don't know how it came there, probably through the USB drive or through the slow internet connection, but the fact is that the system was infected and my parents were not aware of that fact. Absolutely. So I started, <coughs> I suggested them <coughs> to clean the system manually because I'm a malware analyst and I have some experience in that. <laughs> so I started cleaning and the, there comes a problem. I cleaned the system but the malware was so deep into the uh, system libraries that uh, it just, you know, the cleaning process, removing the malware from the system just broke the system. It couldn't start normally. So I was in a trouble because from one side <coughs> I had uh, my parents and on the other side I had a broken system and somewhere in between there was me who just you know tried to help but caused much more troubles because uh, their business computer couldn't be used. The system couldn't start and that was a, a challenge because uh, I felt very badly and I tried to explain my parents uh, what happened and uh, the reason of that. And it was experience of seeing the user's reaction uh, when you try to help and you break something. Uh, they didn't blame me, blame me in uh, breaking their system. They understood clearly that this is malware. And, well, I was lucky. I, I don't know, um, uh, my birthday present probably was, uh, <laughs> uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't reach me uh, my birthday, uh, so it was uh, on risk. Uh, but I was lucky because my parents understood that the threat coming from the malware is much higher than the threat coming from the broken system. Because if you are under control of the bad guys, it's much more dangerous than just a broken system that can be fixed. Um, finally, well, there was a success in this story because I spent some more time <coughs> and I Sorry, and I found uh, the broken components of the system and I could recover it. So uh, normally the users will not blame and will not criticize you so much, even if you tried, if you broken the system. There's been some, uh, you know, general discussion around the industry about maybe the need for some sort of uh, non-governmental uh, organization or some sort of group, some s grouping of sorts from around the world that can take ownership of this issue of, of, of doing disinfections or doing these countermeasures that uh, Tillman talked about in his previous uh, presentation. Do you think we can ever get to the stage down the road where there is such a body and there is such a body or, uh, you know, working through some of these ethical issues and getting to a point where uh, consumers and end users are somewhat comfortable with the idea of disinfection? Do you think we'll ever get there? And then I, I want to throw a general question out to you guys. What do you think is the perfect, what is the in a perfect world, what happens? How do we mesh the need for people's privacy, the need for people to be comfortable, and the need for, to do disinfections to handle this botnet epidemic? I'll start with Kostin. Well, what I think, uh, uh, what we have at the moment, we have the Dutch police, and uh, don't get me wrong, they're doing a really great job. They're pretty much the best uh, law enforcement agency from this point of view, taking down botnets. And what I think that we have here, we have a uh, question, we can fix the problem, but that's illegal, it's unethical, and it's condemned by the uh, public. 
So we should try maybe to fix at least one of them. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I mean I'm probably one. Give as me a perfect world scenario in your mind. Okay, so um, I think the key is transparency. So whatever body steps up in order to take uh, these actions, these kinds of actions, uh, there will be somebody who uh, is in doubt and says, well, they have their own interests. But I think um, if they are as transparent and, and open as possible, then there is a way to well evaluate their. Uh, yeah. Is there a perfect world scenario where you think you can breach the, these offensive countermeasures with the need for privacy and the need for you know, openness? Well, I, I think that in the perfect world, uh, the users uh, must feel much more responsible for their systems left unprotected. Because now it's, you know, anybody may have like two, three PCs connected to the network 24 hours a day and it can be infected and the, the user doesn't care. He feels no responsibility for that. If it's infected, it can be used as a cyber weapon. People don't understand that and this should be changed, I think. That would be a big step towards the perfect world. And probably it should be even in the user's license agreement of software of operating system that if you leave your computer unprotected, if, it's, if it gets infected, we will forcibly uh, clean your system. That should what that what what the vendors should uh, to should say to the users, if from if my perspective. If, and if there is such a body, what are some of the what are some of the important uh, you know uh, questions that need to be answered from an from a uh, uh, end user's point of view? And this is mostly for costing because you you took the position that you know the user's privacy and the user's right to his computer should be paramount. Uh, you know what are some of the things you would like to see? For example, you know uh, you know maybe have independent antivirus analyst vet uh, analyze the executable that's being pushed down and make sure it's not doing what it's, it's supposed to do, make sure police is not using these things in a way that's beyond. I mean, what are some examples of some things you would like to see? Yeah, a very good point. Well, personally, you know, I think that um, there should be a boundary. And for me, the boundary is the uh, uh, executable. Uh, from my point of view, it's okay if it will tell the user that he's infected. But whenever you're taking like a uh, active action by removing the malware, maybe that's you know overstepping that boundary. But that's only you know maybe my opinion. On the other hand, um, in a number of countries already, ISPs are taking some very interesting measures. I think they're quite effective. Um, it's sometimes in some cases as possible to detect that the user's computer uh, is part of a botnet, either by you know looking at the traffic seeing what kind of um, uh, TCP IP ports get accessed and so on. And they're taking active measures by simply disconnecting those users from the internet, just cutting their internet connection. And I think that's a very good thing. You know, if more ISPs around the world could implement that kind of things, uh, it would be much better, much safer place for us all. But obviously, uh, we're talking here about you know active countermeasures. And then I think it would be very important to have an uh, independent body um, which uh, would have uh, antivirus researchers, um, legal experts of, you know, um, from all around the world, law enforcement working together on you know, defining a standard to which these um, actions and these executables you know, must uh, adhere in order to um, make sure that we're not uh, breaking um, life support systems, nuclear reactors, and uh, even, you know, other things.